hello everyone today in this video we'll be discussing the continuation of what we had started in the previous two videos so uh, module 2 part 3 consists of essential hadoop tools okay so basically these are seven or eight tools you have to know about if they ask you about each of these tools you have to write a few key points what are the uh, key points you have to write that we'll be discussing now okay so before starting if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and support helps me make more videos like this Okay, so the first one is all you have to remember is for each of these tools you have to remember one uh, means one line answer. Okay, for example, explain the working and use case of Apache Pig. Okay, what is Pig? Pig is a scripting tool introduced as a way to quickly examine data both locally and on a Hadoop cluster. That's all. This much you have to remember. It is what is a scripting tool. Okay, then you can add points like it is a high level language that enables program to write complex map reduce transformations. It is a set of transformations on a data set such as aggregate, join, in the simple example pig is used so uh, how it is used is to begin the example copy the password file first what you will do you will copy the password file to a working directory for a local pig operation okay so this is the um, command you will be using copy the data file into hdfs then uh, you can confirm this file in hdfs by entering the following command okay so that's how you'll be using pig and here some more operations are there you can go through it Next is Apache Hive. What's the uh, purpose of Apache Hive? Whenever you hear the word Hive, you have to remember that data warehouse and um, that only summarization, ad hoc queries, and analysis of large data sets and all. Okay, like SQL uh, language called HiveQL. For the, this, we'll be using HiveQL. So the following features are there: like it is the easy data extraction, transformation, and uh, loading mechanism for importing structure and variety of data formats and so on. So here's an example given what we'll be uh, first doing is we'll be using Hive to perform many applications. So uh, one of the applications includes um, create the table. So for that we'll be using create table, show table and drop table. Next one is Apache Scoop. Scoop is nothing but RDBMS tool. Okay, RDBMS tool, that's all what I have to remember. It is designed to transfer the data between Hadoop and relational databases. That's the second point. You can input the data from a relational database into the Hadoop distributed file system. Transform the data. You can either um, import the data or you can export the data. Okay, that's all. What is about the Apache Scoop? Moving on. Um, also here's some example you can go through it there is some loading of uh, data and importing the data and doing some operations okay so just for your reference so here's an example means the line how to create a table in uh, apache scoop okay so that's all what is there in apache scoop Going on, we have the next one, which is Apache Flumes. Flumes is used for what data streams? Okay, means it is an independent agent designed to collect, transport, and store data. Collect, transport, and what? Store data. Okay, so it is used for the like file, social media, um, email messages, just about the uh, containers in data sources. So here's the web server, here's the HDFS, source command, and sync. These three things are happening here. Okay, source from where the data is coming, channel, uh, the data sequence or a queue, and sync is where the data is getting stored. There is an example downloading install this uh, apache uh, flume and do a simple test by running this command it configures the agent and in another window you still need to connect to the agent contact the agent two files are needed to uh, use this file so two files are needed here create a directory and start a flume agent and uh, that's all okay and the agent writes the data into HDFS and be the source and uh, should be the source agent. The target agent can be configured to write the file in settings, some of the role code, role size, and so on. Okay, so all you have to do is just remember what it does and just expand uh, in your own words what it is. Okay, and write some technical terms here. Okay. Next one we have explained the managing how to workflows with Apache Uzi. Uzi. Uzi, the main thing you need to know, it's a workflow director. What it is, it's a workflow director designed to run and manage multiple related Apache Hadoop jobs. It is designed to construct and manage the uh, different workflows. It's just like a yarn, but slightly different. Three types of Uzi jobs are permitted workflow, specified sequence of Hadoop, Hadoop jobs, and coordinator schedules the workflow between the jobs and bundle a higher level uzi abstraction which will batch a set of uh, constructor jobs and here different types of nodes are there control flow nodes action nodes and fork join nodes or control flow nodes okay and one example work to download the uzi extract these files and when it's extracted move to hdfs run the map reduce example the resulting output is the following listing and the uzi demo application okay and we have the how the uh, flowchart of uzi operates start and cleanup node fork node streaming and pig node 
we'll be using and then we'll be using the join node mr node decision node hdfs node and end okay and some of the uh, commands which we'll be using is to run our workflow we'll be using uz job run config and, uh, and all submit a workflow start a submitted job check a job status suspend a workflow re resume a workflow return a workflow kill a job and view the server logs okay next one what you have is the apache hbase okay hbase the main thing you need to know what it is it's an open source distributed version uh, relational database modeled after google's big table it's like ju just like google's big table okay so just like big table uh, base languages are distributed data storage provided by underlying distributed files some of the important features are the following linear and modular strictly constrict and automatic and configurable automatic failover support convenient base classes easy to use okay some of the examples uh, of the data overview are given here a table has the rows and the columns it is uh, specified by a specific hbase uh, cell it can many have uh, it can have many versions of the data within the hbase cell all the access to the table data uh, table row and the key are considered as the primary key so here some examples are given means uh, how do you use this one so hba shell you can write various commands can be used for different purposes and here's an example like uh, to create a database we'll be using this one to inspect the database we'll be using this one just that you have to use hbase in uh, the first part and after that whatever the sub uh, thing you want to do you'll be doing here you get a row get a table cell delete cell delete row remove table adding the data in bulk all these uh, things are given just, just need to know the syntax write the operation and write the syntax in your own words okay what is Hadoop an application this is on the last uh, topic uh, means uh, from the different uh, essential tools and one more topic is there uh, I guess it is there I'm not sure so I don't think so it is there this is the last topic what is Hadoop a yarn application in yarn there are three things the first thing you need to know is the yarn distributed shell what is a distributed shell it is a simple mechanism for running shell commands. that's all it is a mechanism for doing what's uh, running the shell commands and scripts in containers or multiple nodes on Hadoop cluster okay and shell can contain contain any abstract uh, arbitrary command in a container okay it can contain, contain any command by default the shell system only default instance of the shell command is given and you can apply any uh, program on the screen and if it is successful it will display success otherwise it will display application fail distributed shell can run commands and be executed in any number of containers second thing you need to write is about the structure of yarn applications what is the structure of yarn applications this uh, central yarn uh, resource manager there is a resource manager in the center it runs a scheduling daemon and uh, added uh addicted machine and uh, the central authority for the allocating uh, resources in the structure the main thing is about the resource manager it uh, dynamically allocates the resources okay it has the container of logically bund uh, bundle of resources bound to a particular cluster node and communication between the resource manager and the node manager can be uh, based for scalability so and machine that are accepted to pass for the scalability that are allowed to run so basically you just have to go through this these are very simple points what it does it just manages that's all it manages schedules runs the programs and resources are handled from here to there the handle of the faults and consumption happens that's the second point okay and some application frameworks are there how many you can remember remember distributed shell is the first one it is an example where the different um, Resources are distributed. Hadoop, MapReduce, you already know about MapReduce, mapping and reducing. Apache uh, test, it executes the execution of complex directed acyclic graph. Okay. And Giraffe is used for graph processing system. HBase uh, on uh, Yarn, it is a uh, dynamic and elastic HBase clusters on top of Yarn. Dryad on Yarn, it's similar to Apache Taze, but uh, a DAG uh, abstraction of execution workflow is taking place here. Spark is used for the applications in which keeping data in memory improves the performance such as the algorithms and so on. Apache Storm is used to eventually finish, but the Apache Storm continually, continually press manages with its uh, when it's stopped. Reef is used for the challenge and factors uh, several components that are common to many applications such as storage management, data caching, fault detection, and checkpoints. Basically, you just have to remember the key points, and all of these tools does the same thing. Just write any rules for any of these. Okay. Message passing system is widely used for the performance HPC and Apache Flink. It is used for the scalable batch and stream processing, distributed uh, general data processing, and the last one, which is Apache Slider. It is used for existing, applying existing uh, distributed application, monitoring them and make them larger and smaller in the desired real value. So that's all uh, what is there in the third part. It's very simple one. So make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.